Welcome to Election Night in America 2022 and our coverage of the 2022 Senate elections where Democrats are fighting to defend their slim majority as Chuck Schumer attempts to become the Senate Majority Leader for a second time. Tonight we'll keep you guys updated on all of the races that we have which will decide the makeup of the balance of power in the Senate for the next two years and this of course will dictate whether or not Joe Biden will be able to get his agenda passed through Congress in the second half of his presidential term. So looking at our initial map, we have 35 races tonight. That is because of the fact that Jim Inhofe is retiring earlier next year. So that makes it 35 with that special election that we will have in the state of Oklahoma. But Democrats currently hold 36 seats that are not up for contest tonight and 29 for the Republicans. And these 35 races will decide, of course, the makeup of the U.S. Senate until 2025. It is at 7 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our first five poll closings of the night. First off, from the state of Georgia, this is the big race in which we are watching from this poll closing. We also have polls closing in the states of Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. In the state of Georgia, we can predict that Herschel Walker is the projected winner in this key race. This is a big gain for the Republican Party. Herschel Walker, endorsed by Donald Trump since the beginning, he will defeat an unseat de Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock. Of course, Warnock was just elected earlier last year in a runoff election against Kelly Loeffler after the 2020 election cycle. However, Herschel Walker will now unseat Warnock, who will only be able to serve in the Senate for just less than two years. With 50.1% of the vote, Walker very narrowly avoids that runoff there, but this is a big gain for the GOP, and the night has only started. In the state of Indiana, Todd Young is the projected winner. He will be re-elected to a second term in Congress, as well as the fact that in the state of Kentucky, Rand Paul, another win for the Republican Party, no surprises here either, Rand Paul easily re-elected to a third term representing the state of Kentucky alongside Mitch McConnell. And in the state of South Carolina, Tim Scott is the projected winner, the incumbent since 2013. Tim Scott will continue to serve alongside Lindsey Graham, representing South Carolina in the Senate. And finally, in the state of Vermont, Peter Welch is the projected winner. He will replace longtime Democratic incumbent Patrick Leahy. Leahy is the only retiring Democratic incumbent tonight. But Pat Peter Welch, the sole representative of Vermont in the U.S. House for many years now, is the projected winner in the Vermont Senate race. And with these preliminary results, we have 37 seats for the Democratic Party, 33 for the Republicans. The night is still very early and both parties still have a very good chance at winning control of the U.S. Senate tonight. It is now half past seven here on the East Coast and we have just two poll closings from the states of North Carolina and Ohio. In the state of North Carolina, this is a key race here. Ted Budd is the projected winner. He will hold on to the seat for the Republican Party, as of course Richard Burr, the retiring Republican incumbent, is no longer going to serve in Congress after 2023. So Ted Budd is the projected winner and will replace the longtime Republican incumbent. Ted Budd, of course, defeats Sherry Beasley with 50.7% of the vote, 459 for the Democrat Sherry Beasley. This was a disappointing result for the Democratic Party as they have tried to capture the Senate seat in North Carolina for many years now unsuccessfully. And in the state of Ohio, J.D. Vance very narrowly for the state of Ohio. J.D. Vance, though, is still the projected winner. He will defeat Tim Ryan in this key race. This is another hold for the Republican Party as Rob Portman is going to retire after this term as well. And looking at the results here, 49.8% of the vote for Vance. Vance not even reaching 50%. Tim Ryan for a Democrat in the now not-so-swing state of Ohio. Tim Ryan will win 46.3% of the vote. This, of course, was still a pretty impressive showing for the Democratic Party, especially in a year like 2022 where Joe Biden is heavily disapproved of. Joe Biden, though, is not does not seem to be the major factor in this race. Joe Biden lost the state of Ohio by over 8% to Donald Trump in 2020, but Tim Ryan came pretty close, relatively speaking. However, he did not get close enough as J.D. Vance is the projected winner in the state of Ohio and will serve in the U.S. Senate until 2029. And looking at our map now, we have 35 for the GOP, 37 still for the Democrats as the Republicans are starting to catch up.
It is now 8 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our largest poll closing of the night, with polls closing in the states of Alabama, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Missouri, New Hampshire, as well as the two elections in Oklahoma, one of them being the special Senate election, and of course, the key race in the state of Pennsylvania. In the state of Alabama, Katie Britt is the projected winner. She will replace retiring Republican incumbent Richard Shelby. So this is a hold for the Republican Party as Katie Britt is elected to her first term representing Alabama in the United States Senate. In the state of Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal is the projected winner. He will be easily re-elected to a third term representing Connecticut in the United States Senate. And in the state of Florida, Marco Rubio, another easy win here for the Republican Party. Marco Rubio will also be re-elected to a third term. He is now eligible to serve in the Senate until 2029. The third place finisher in the 2016 Republican primary will defeat Representative Val Demings of his own state. 52.7% for Marco Rubio, 42.9% for Val Demings. This is a very strong finish for a Republican in the state of Florida, almost double Trump's margin over Biden in the 2020 presidential election. Marco Rubio is the projected winner to a third term in the state of Florida. And in the state of Illinois, Cami Duckworth is the projected winner. She was elected in her last run in 2016. This will be her re-election, her first re-election, and it has gone successfully for Senator Duckworth as she is now re-elected to a second term in the United States Senate. As well as that, in the state of Maryland, Chris Van Hollen also re-elected to a second term in Congress as he will continue to represent the state of Maryland. In the state of Missouri, former Governor Eric Green, who resigned in disgrace in 2016, is now the projected winner of the Senate race in the state of Missouri. He has come back, and against all odds, he did win the Republican primary after, of course, resigning in disgrace just a couple of years ago. But Eric Green's will hold on to the Missouri seat for the Republican Party as Roy Blunt retires after this election cycle. So Eric Green's is the projected winner in the state of Missouri. He will defeat Lucas Kuntz with 51.4% of the vote. Lucas Kuntz 45.1. This, of course, was a smaller margin than what we may have seen with other Republican candidates. However, Eric Greens did win the Republican nomination, so he did go on, of course, to the final general election where he was able to win a majority of votes. So, Eric Greens is the projected winner and will serve his first term in Congress representing the state of Missouri. In the state of New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan is going to cruise to victory herself. This is her first re-election campaign after defeating Republican incumbent Kelly Yacht in 2016. Maggie Hassan is the projected winner in New Hampshire as she defeats Chuck Morse, winning 52.5% of votes cast. A bit of a stronger performance than what most people expected. Maggie Hassan is the projected winner in the state of New Hampshire. And now in the state of Oklahoma, this is the regular election. James Lankford now is going to be the senior senator from the state of Oklahoma as he is re-elected to his second term in Congress, his second full term in Congress as of course he was first elected in a special election as well in 2014. And in the state of Oklahoma, in the special election, Mark Wayne Mullen will now become the junior senator of the state of Oklahoma alongside James Lankford. He will hold on to this seat for the Republican Party as Jim Inhofe is retiring. Mark Wayne Mullen, the projected winner of the Oklahoma Senate special election. And finally, in the state of Pennsylvania, this is the big one. John Fetterman is the projected winner of the Pennsylvania Senate race as he defeats Mehmet Oz. This is very likely to be the only flip of the night for the Democratic Party as John Fetterman is able to flip the seat previous held, previously held by Republican incumbent Pat Toomey, who will be retiring after this term. So John Fetterman is the projected winner in the Pennsylvania Senate race. This, of course, is a major gain for the Democratic Party as he keeps the Democratic Party's hope of retaining the Senate alive, 49.2% for John Fetterman, the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania, 48.4% for Mehmet Oz. And now with our largest poll closing of the night and the calls that we've just made, 42 seats now for the Democratic Party, 40 for the Republicans as the GOP continues to gain on the Democrats. This race is still neck and neck between the Democrats and the Republicans as they fight to take control of the U.S. Senate after these midterms. 42 to 40 as of right now as we head into our one poll closing at 8.30.
It is at half past eight here on the East Coast, and we have just one poll closing from the state of Arkansas. And in the state of Arkansas, we can project that John Boozman is the projected winner. He will now be reelected to his third term in Congress representing the state of Arkansas. Of course, this is a very easy victory for the Republican incumbent. John Boozman is the projected winner. And this will give Republicans now 41 seats, 42 still for the Democratic Party as the GOP is gaining on the Democrats' lead. It's 9 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our second largest poll closing of the night with polls closing in eight states. Of course, the big one being the state of Arizona where Mark Kelly is running for his re-election, but we also have polls closing in the states of Colorado, Kansas, Louisiana, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, as well as that other key race in Wisconsin. In the state of Arizona, we can project that Mark Kelly is the projected winner. He was first elected in the 2020 special election here against Martha McSally. Mark Kelly, of course, will now be elected to his first full term in Congress. And this is a major win for the Democratic Party as Mark Kelly does keep the Democrats' hope of retaining Senate control alive with this win in this key race. Mark Kelly will defeat Blake Masters, the very late Trump-endorsed candidate who only won 47.9% of the vote against Mark Kelly's 48%. Point nine. This margin is lesser than the 2.3% margin we saw for Kelly in 2020. However, in a year like 2022, this is an impressive victory for both Mark Kelly and the Democratic Party as he has been able to pull off a major and stunning win here in Arizona, being elected now to his first full six-year term until 2029. In the state of Colorado, we can also project that Michael Bennett is the projected winner. This is another key race, however, it was not expected to be as close as the one that we had in Arizona. Michael Bennett first appointed in 2009. This will be his third election win for the incumbent Democrat. Michael Bennett, the senior senator from Colorado, will win 52.1% of the vote. Joe Dia, only 44.8%. Michael Bennett actually did better than he did in 2016. Michael Bennett here is the projected winner to another six-year term representing the state of Colorado in the U.S. Senate. In the state of Kansas, Jerry Moran is the projected winner of the incumbent since 2011. Jerry Moran will be re-elected to a third term representing the state of Kansas. In the state of Louisiana, John Kennedy will also be re-elected to his second term now. John Kennedy will be serving another six years in Congress representing his home state of Louisiana. In the state of New York, Chuck Schumer, the current Senate Majority Leader, Incumbent since 1999, one of the oldest senators that we have up for re-election tonight. Chuck Schumer is the projected winner of his home state of New York, and whether or not he remains majority leader, we will have to see after our poll closings later on tonight. In the state of North Dakota, John Hoven is the projected winner. He will be re-elected to a third term representing his home state in Congress. And in the state of South Dakota, John Thune is also the projected winner here, the incumbent since 2005. He will be re-elected to his fourth term in Congress representing the state of South Dakota. And finally, in the state of Wisconsin, Ron Johnson is the projected winner, although he did promise in his last campaign that he would not run again in 2022. Ron Johnson changed his mind and he will now be re-elected for a third term representing Wisconsin in the United States Senate. He did get a lot of support very early on from Donald Trump to run for re-election, and that's what he has decided to do, caving into all that pressure. But Ron Johnson will defeat Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, winning 50.2% of the vote. This was a better result than what we saw for him in 2016 as well. Ron Johnson with a solid victory in the state of Wisconsin as he will serve now until 2029. And after our second largest poll closing of the night, the GOP has now taken the lead with 46 seats. Democrats still at 45, just a little bit lower now. But the Democratic Party still does have a very good shot after winning control, after retaining control of their seat in Arizona with Mark Kelly's re-election. The, really the only one major race that we have left is the state of Nevada as the balance of power in the Senate now hangs on to it. And whether or not Catherine Cortez Masto will be able to win her re-election for the Democratic Party. It is now two hours until midnight here on the East Coast, and we have our three poll closings from the states of Iowa, Nevada, and Utah. Of course, that race in Nevada is going to be crucial in deciding the balance of power in the Senate after these midterms. 
in the state of Iowa, Chuck Grassley is the projection winner, the oldest member of the Senate, and of course he will be the longest serving member of the United States Senate after Patrick Leahy leaves office earlier next year. But Chuck Grassley, the incumbent since 1981, now in office for over 40 years, Chuck Grassley is the projected winner in the state of Iowa as the state re-elects him another time. And this is the major call here. Adam Luxalt is the projected winner in the state of Nevada. He will unseat Democratic incumbent Catherine Cortez Masto, who was first elected in 2016 to replace former Democratic Majority Leader Harry Reid. But Adam Luxalt, this is a major gain for the De Republican Party. Adam Luxalt is the projected winner in the state of Nevada, winning 47.7% of the vote this is again a major call and this will likely give the republicans control of the senate after these midterms 47.7 to 47.1 for catherine cortez masto the democratic incumbent and finally, in the state of Utah, Mike Lee is the projected winner. He will now win a third term. He actually will defeat Evan McMullen, the independent candidate. The, Dem the Democratic Party did not nominate anyone too strong in this race and ended up supporting Evan McMullen. But Mike Lee will defeat McMullen and win another six-year term representing Utah alongside Mitt Romney as the senior senator from Utah. And this gives the Republicans now 49 seats, Democrats still at 45. The GOP is now two seats away from retaking control of the United States Senate. It is now 11 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our poll closings from the West Coast, with polls closing in the states of California, Hawaii, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. In the state of California, Alex Padilla will be elected to his first full term in Congress. He was appointed by Gavin Newsom earlier last year to replace Kamala Harris, who went on to become vice president. But Alex Padilla, the incumbent since just last year, will now be elected to his first full term representing the state of California in the United States Senate. In the state of Hawaii, Brian Schatz will also be re-elected for a second time after being first appointed in 2012. Brian Schatz is the projected winner in the state of Hawaii. In the state of Oregon, Mike Crapo, the projected winner, also one of the oldest senators that are up for re-election this year. Mike Crapo, the incumbent since 1999, first elected in 1998. Mike Crapo is the projected winner as he's now elected to a fifth term in the United States Senate. In the state of Oregon, Ron Wyden is the projected winner, even older, the incumbent now since 1996. Ron Wyden is the projected winner in the state of Oregon and will also continue to serve his home state until 2029. And finally, in the state of Washington, Patty Murray, the projected winner, the incumbent since 1993, will be elected to her sixth term in Congress in the state of Washington in the United States Senate. And with these last couple of poll closings here, we now have 49 seats for the Democrats, 50 for the GOP. The only state left remaining is the state of Alaska that will now be using ranked choice voting to decide their elections. But in the state of Alaska, we do expect that to go to the GOP. But as of right now, the Republicans have 50 seats and 49 for the Democrats. It is now an hour past midnight here on the East Coast, and we have our final poll closing in the 2022 Senate elections, and that of course is from the state of Alaska. In the state of Alaska, Lisa Murkowski is the projected winner of the incumbent since being appointed in 2022. Lisa Murkowski faced a tough primary challenge from Kelly Chewbacca as a result of voting in favor of impeaching Donald Trump in 2021, but Lisa Murkowski will win her re-election to represent the state of Alaska once again. She is the projected winner in this key race. As she defeats Kelly Chewbacca, this is the first Senate race to see ranked choice voting in, the, in her home state as she wins 55.3% on the final ballot in the ranked choice voting process. Kelly Chewbacca 44.7% as she comes just a bit short. This call in Alaska, we can now project that the Republicans have retaken control of the United States Senate alongside the House. That is not going good for the Democrats at this point in time either. We do now fully expect the Republicans to take back control of all of Congress. The Republicans will now become 
in charge of the Senate once again after losing it briefly after the 2020 election alongside the election of Joe Biden as president. But this is now our official projection. We can project the, the Republican Party has retaken control of the United States Senate in these midterm elections. This is very bad news for Joe Biden and his party going into the next couple of years. And looking at our map here, 51 for the GOP, 49 for the Democrats. The Democrats were able to flip Pennsylvania with that victory from John Fetterman. However, they did lose in both Nevada and Georgia, and that will result in the Democrats losing their very slim majority to begin with. But the Republicans have now retaken control, and Mitch McConnell is expected to become the Senate Majority Leader once again.